Okay, so here's my vibration test set up. This is the Wilcoxon piezoelectric accelerometer. It's 100 millivolts per G, very accurate. Uh, this is a voice coil exciter, which allows me to uh, set, shake this thing with a sine wave, uh, driven by a function generator. And right now, I have a small Altoids box, which has the current source required to feed the accelerometer, since it runs off a of current. Uh, and it will produce then, of course, an AC voltage because we're driving uh, the voice coil with the sine wave. So that's what we expect to see. And sure enough, if we look over here at the Rigol, we have about seven to eight millivolts um, RMS. Fairly small signal. We have averaging turned on so we can see it better. And if you look at the meter, which is what I'm going to take flying, it's reading about six millivolts. So there's a little bit of discrepancy there, but as we turn up the amplitude um, on um, function generator, produce a larger waveform, it starts to be a little more accurate, 17 versus 16. So that value right there represents 0.16 Gs, and it's at a frequency of uh, 68 hertz. Now what we'll do in the airplane is we'll use the RMS value we get here, we'll plug that into our vibration calculator, and we'll use the RPM and plug that into our vibration calculator. So we won't have frequency measurement. I won't take the scope. All I'm going to do is take the fluke and the battery powered current source. I'll take those flying. I'll get a value off of here, enter that as the RMS and the vibration specifications for um, aircraft are in peak. So we'll convert RMS to peak. So that's it. That's the whole test setup right there. And I'm going to go flying.